the Cirrus Vision Jet. It's the culmination of enthusiastic and relentless innovation. According to the Cirrus brochure that I just downloaded, it can cruise at over 30,000 feet, has a range between 800 to 1200 nautical miles, and it has the built-in safety of the Cirrus airframe parachute system. But what is it really like to fly the Cirrus Vision Jet? I was invited to fly the G2 version of Cirrus's SF50 late last year to get some hands-on experience of what it is like to fly this single pilot, single engine, $1.96 million private jet. Now I've already shared some footage from that flight here on the channel, but I wanted to delve deeper into what the Vision Jet was really like to fly with some new footage never seen before. So what is it like to fly the Vision Jet? Well, let's start where any good pilot starts any flight with the takeoff. Uh, that would even be better if we could somehow get it like a little forward like that, maybe? Yeah, is yeah, well, whatever's gonna work, yeah. Final's clear, base is clear. Left, high, and low is clear. All right, rolling start. Yes, sir. We'll do a rolling start here. So start bringing a little bit of power up now just to stabilize it here. Keep it coming around with the brakes for now. Okay. There you go. Release the brakes here. We're just kind of get it rolling. Bring the throttle about halfway up. And now we'll go full throttle. Just bring it all the way up past the click. The full takeoff power. The left foot here is needed. There you go. Got it. Let it come back with the airflow. Going to full throttle now. You got a little more left there. There it is. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Looks good. Airspeed's alive. Cast is clear. We got great acceleration. 60. 85, there it is, nice and easy, pull it up, we're airborne, bring the nose down a hair, trim forward over here if you need to, just a little bit, that'll reduce the force, that's better, alright, grab the gear handle, bring that out and up, I use it, come back to the trim wheel, be ready to trim forward a little bit more even, just make it feel nice and light in the head, really good, great takeoff, thank you, you're flying a jet man, uh, don't believe it, <laughs> Controlling the power output of the jet engine is actually really straightforward. There's just a single lever FADEC control which controls the power output of the jet engine. You set it to one position and that's it. There's no other control adjustments. Looking great. We're clear of all obstacles out here. Now you come back to that click, that MCT. So go okay. pull that back and you're going to pull it right into that, feel it fall into there. Yep, I got that. We'll just leave it right there. What was that, MCT? Max this? Continuous Thrust. So Max Continuous Thrust, we're allowed full power up to five minutes. We recommend after two to pull it back. Yep. And okay. then uh, it is just a way of taking some wear and tear off the engine. Yeah. Which allows us to get a TBO of 4,000 hours, right? So if you were to leave it at full, I don't think you'd create damage uh, yeah. on that first flight, but you would probably get a call from Williams going, hey, how do you feel about the warranty on your engine, you know? You want to keep so, the climb going? Yeah, we can keep well. it going. Let's keep it so, going on up. So the airspace above us is six right here, this restricted area in this region. So gotcha. we'll just put it maybe 5,500. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You saw some of the stuff up there on the high altitude, so we'll just keep it lower here around five and just let you bank it around, have some fun with the airplane. Right. Really get a feel for it. Obviously with a centerline thrust single engine, there's no issues with slipstream or asymmetric control if you lose one engine. So controlling the aircraft on the takeoff roll was actually quite straightforward. And pretty easy, I mean, there's not very much wind today, but that directional control on the runway as well. Yeah. There wasn't really very much Not input. much to it, is no, it? No, not much to You're it. You're so used to right rudder oh, in the pistons yeah, and or it, a big old it. prop airplane, but here with the jet, you've got centerline thrust. You've got some torque from the engine because it's spooled up at a high RPM. Yeah. So if you hold the brakes on a start, go full throttle, and then release, you'll actually feel a left pull from the torque of the engine. Oh, yeah. But when you do a rolling start like we did, you'll notice there was just nothing. It was a little uh, right, a little left. It's just... Whereas Not if you're climbing there. up to 10,000 in the SR-22, your right leg is like <laughs> killing you by the end as well. Yeah. That torque effect that you're probably used to, the effect you get from an aircraft with a spinning propeller at the front, which you have to be really wary of in things like low airspeed, high power go-arounds, isn't really an issue when you're flying something like the Vision Jet. It's one of the safety things too, I think, of a single jet like this, though, compared to like a turboprop. You notice when we went around earlier, we hit toga and we go around with full yeah. power, but you don't have torque where you're rolling to the left. You don't have a rollover tendency like the large turboprop would have. Yeah. It's just uh, forward thrust. Here we go. You know, the feet, auto yaw damper, you don't do anything about it. In terms of the performance, well, we climbed up to 5,000 feet in the Vision Jet, leveled off, and quickly got to around 250 knots or 460 kilometers an hour as the aircraft leveled off. So what are we getting, Taz, at the moment? So 250 knots at the moment. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly right. 250 is still accelerating forward quite a bit. Yeah. Right about here, if you want to take the throttle, we'll kind of pull it back here at 54% power right now. Let's bring it down to about 30%. 30%? Yeah. The ballpark figure just kind of gets things under control, smooths everything out for just cruising around like this. 
Also gets my fuel way down here in the 50s. Oh, for yeah. just, I don't, I'm still doing 220 here. But it just gets the fuel flow down. I said burning 100 gallons an hour down low like this. The jet also has ESP built in or electronic stability and protection, which is available in other Cirrus aircraft as well. It's basically a system that helps take control of the aircraft if you try to do things outside of the normal envelope, like overbanking. You kind of saw what we talked about earlier, but if you want to give it a little yank and bank left and right here, you're welcome yeah, to go over to 45 coming. degrees either side. We'll just keep the uh, blue side up, right? So other than that, there's 30. Going over to 45. Go past those double bar lines. And, and notice yeah. that's not me fighting you. That's the autopilot saying, hey, get back over here yeah. just a little bit, right? Go back over to the right, we'll do the same thing. They're on the right. As you get up to that 45 degree oh, bank cute. angle, a little back squeeze, little put back the green squeeze. donut there. There you go. And then keep the bank going. I want you to try to fight it this time. Try to stay at 45 right there. Notice it's, you can overpower it, but it's tight. <laughs> it's tight. It really wants to get you back in. It wants to help you, doesn't there's it? There's just no excuse to be over that bank angle no, when you're flying not. an airplane like this. You know, yeah. Unless you're out doing some commercial maneuvers or something like that, which we can go in the system and turn it off in that case. But in this yeah. case, from a safety standpoint, again, it's just always nice having technology looking out for you like that. Speed is all well and good, but then what we did is we tried to configure the aircraft for slow flight to basically try and replicate what it's like coming in under a full landing configuration. Wanna try a little slow flight up here? Yeah, let's do it. Pull the throttle all the way back to idle. Give me your first notch of flaps, go ahead and drop that down. First notch of flaps. Gear, we'll go ahead and drop that down. Gear down. It was a good idea to keep your hand there till you see three green. Uh, yep. See, I fly with a fixed undercarriage. There you so go. I have bad habits. Three, three, green, down three green. That's all right. The has got to start somewhere, and that'll uh, any any retractable gear airplane that'll teach you, you know, never to land gear up, right? Right. Yeah. Both flaps now. You can bring that in. Both flaps. There you go. Kind of hanging out right there. Now ease your nose down to about four degrees down. We'll just get in a nice shallow little descent here, right about there. Okay. You can spool your power back up just a hair. Go ahead and crack it. There you go. It's going to set it right around 25% right there. 25%. There you go. Control performance, pitch plus power equals a stabilized oh, descent. You're in the most stable little 700-ish descent rate. Here's where you'll end up. This is what a normal landing approach is going to feel like, right? right. Just four or five degrees down like this. Power is just a constant. Pitch is a constant. Gives us a stabilized approach. Yeah. Now, we're in the stable approach way back here at 80 knots. Let's make a little turn to the left. 10, 20, even 30 degrees of bank. Notice. Plenty of altitude here. Just no buffet, no loss no. of control at all. No, none at all. It's back smooth, over to the actually. right, fairly aggressively. You want to feel the ailerons. It's got ton of aileron control with no tendency to want to roll over or lose that control whatsoever. And once we'd finished the slow flight, the aircraft actually performs really well when you want to clean it up and apply power again. We're going to bring the throttle back up to MCT. Okay. You're going to bring the flaps up. Go ahead and clean those up. Bring the gear up. And notice how much you got to start pushing on that stick. It accelerates quickly, so you're going to have to Both trim. Stages. And there you go, the last flaps. Perfect. Start trimming forward, trimming <laughs> forward. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of pressure, isn't it? Nose is coming right up. You got all that thrust now, and you're going out. You did a great job there, holding it right there around four degrees pitch up, five degrees pitch up is a good place to resume a climb. Yeah, trying to get the climb back. Now I already shared the landing in the other video, so I'll link to that from up above here if you haven't seen that one already. But once we were down on the ground, what is the Cirrus Vision Jet like to taxi? the probe heat off. We'll turn that off. Clear on the right, clear on the left. Give her a little power as you keep the turn going through here. Oh, yeah. Actually, I've got to be honest, I find this easier to taxi than the uh, SR-22. It can be. Uh, it's that self-centering spring that's in the nose gear that really helps it track straight. The 22 can just yeah. drift a little bit, you know, if you get a strong crosswind or a little slant in the taxiway, but the spring here just makes it track so straight. Is there any airflow over the um, rudders? In this, so is it all differential braking? It's all differential braking. Yeah. yeah, try moving the rudder pedals right now. Full right. Notice a yeah, tiny, there's nothing. tiny, tiny bit, maybe with that, because you have a little headwind. Because the headwind, yeah, maybe. yeah. <laughs> but with no wind, you just get nothing. Nothing, yeah. Oh, it's such a good sound, isn't it? For yeah. someone who's only ever flown piston engine aircraft all this oh, life, it's yeah, like, it's... you know, you get your hands on a throttle like this, and it, it feels good. You'll never forget the first time flying the turbine airplane. It's a pretty cool sound. And just as I was stopping the aircraft, please also enjoy this very awkward moment when I left Justin completely hanging for a post-flight handshake. That'll work right there. 
Idle. Yep, that's it. All the way back. Beautiful job. Power break. Beautiful job. Squeeze the brakes once. That'll hold that pressure, and you're all good. Really you're enjoyed that, man. Yeah, that was fun, teammate. That, that was, was awesome. Wicked. Classic. All right, let me know your thoughts on the Vision Jet or any questions you might have for me of what it's like to fly the SF50. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.